So 8.3 is about using accumulation functions and definite integrals in applied contexts. For this section, um, you will often be allowed to use your calculator. Um, and you will be given a rate function, usually. And with that rate function, you can figure out a couple of different things about the amount. Um, one of the things you can figure out is using a definite integral. You can figure out the net change in the amount over a time period. Um, and the other thing that you can use is the accumulation function to figure out an equation for the amount. So you add the initial amount, the amount at that a value, to the accumulation function, and that gives you an equation for the amount. This is something that's useful if you need to find maxes and mins. Um, and or if you need to somehow treat that amount equation, so if you need to find an actual amount, um, as a function, you will write it with the accumulation function. Um, this version of the notes is video is for students who have a TI Inspire calculator. And unfortunately, there is no um, version that I can use at home, and I'm home this week. So I have just a picture of your keyboard, and you're going to have to kind of um, play a little bit, but you can get it. Um, these are often question one on the AP test, so they're often calculator active questions. Okay, so for this first question, the rate at which people enter an auditorium for a rock concert is modeled by the function r, given by r of t equals uh, for t between zero and two hours. R of t is measured in people per hour. No one is in the auditorium at time t equals zero. I'm just going to write that down. A of zero equals zero is going to be a useful piece of information. The doors open and close, the doors close, and the concert begins at t equals two. All right, so another piece of information that's pretty useful is that we only care about zero to two hours, so we can set our window to just show zero to two hours. Um, so the first question says, how many people are in the auditorium when the concert begins? Um, so for this question, we want the change in the rate because there were zero people in the beginning. So for question A, we're going to do that integral from zero to two, but I'm going to warn you, when you have a calculator, I strongly recommend that the first thing you do is graph your function. And the reason I recommend that the first thing you do is graph your function is because if you graph your function, then you have it saved and you can refer to it on your calculator over and over again and you don't have to retype it. This can save you from typos, and it can also um, just, um, just save you time. And the AP test is often all about time. So what you're going to do um, to begin this question, even before you do any math, is you're going to hit the Home button, and you're going to open up a new document. And you're going to add a graphing screen to begin with. So you add a graphing screen. And then you're going to graph this function. So you'll do f1 of x equals, and you'll type that function in. Um, that function is now saved as f1 of x. And so you um, will always be able to refer it to it for your calculator as f1 of x. Um, so you're saving it to the calculator's memory so that you don't have to retype it. Um, at this point, we don't really care that much about the graph of R, but if we wanted to adjust our window, that wouldn't be a bad idea. To adjust your window while you're on that graphing screen, you can hit Menu, and then you can choose Window, and the very first option is Window, uh, or choose Window Zoom, and the first option is Window Settings. With Window Settings, you can set your X min. Well, we're going to set that to zero, and our x max will set to two. 
That way we're setting up our domain to match the domain of the problem. And then we might need to make a guess about how many people we'll have. So we might just say our y min, well, we know it's not going to be negative. So we could set our y min to zero and our y max could maybe be a thousand. Um, that's just a guess. And so we might need to change those numbers. But you're adjusting your domain and your range so that your graph fits nicely on your screen. Okay, and then we're going to do this definite integral. So what you're going to do to do the definite integral after you get your function graphed, you're going to hit the on the home button again, and you're going to add a calculator window to your document. So you save your graph and you add a calculator window to your document. And then when you're in a calculator window, you can hit menu calculus and choose the, in, the numerical integral option, which is the second one down. So you could hit a number two or you could scroll to it and select it. Um, and then when you're on the integral, you get that blank box so you can type your stuff in. But here's where we're saving time. We are going to choose, as we once we type zero to two, we're going to choose var. So we're going to type that var button. And as you can see, F1 pops up as an option for you. So you do F1 of x dx, and you don't have to rewrite that equation. And when you do that, you should get 980. So that's question A. It didn't save us a lot of time to have F1 graphed for question A, but it will save us time in the long run. All right, question B asks us to find the time when the rate at which people enter the auditorium is a maximum. So whenever you have to find the uh, maximum for a function, you are going to um, take a derivative so you can set the derivative equal to zero. AP expects you to do your derivatives by hand, even if you have a calculator that does it for you. AP will do arithmetic for you, so you can just write 1380 times 2t minus 675 times 3t squared if you don't feel like multiplying things out without a calculator, but you have a calculator too, so you could also multiply things out. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to push, you're going to just write, so the College Board knows that you're setting that equal to zero, you're going to write either zero equals r prime of t, or you're going to write out the function again. Then you're going to go back to your calculator, and you can either um, use the same graphing window that you already have, or you can hit the Home button again and create a new graph screen. So you can add a graph to your document. Your document may now have three different pages. And just a note, you can always use the trackpad to move your mouse to different pages and click on the tab that you want. Or you can hit control and then this side of the keypad and this side of the keypad navigate you around that, um, that list of documents, list of pages in your document. Okay, so you have now have a graphing window in front of you, and what you're going to do with that graphing window is you are going to type f2 of x equals, and then you'll put this equation in. You can multiply it out again, or the ti will multiply it for you. You just have to put a time sign in there. So you don't have to do that multiplication if you don't feel like it. Oops, I wrote that wrong. Um, this is not something that your calculator can do for you unless you have a CAS, but I'm still just going to expect you to do this by hand because the College Board does. Okay, so you graph that equation, and then you're going to find the zeros of that equation. The way you find zeros is you hit the Menu button. So you hit Menu, and then you choose Analyze Graph. And when you're on Analyze Graph, one of the options is zero. Um, it expects you to choose a left bound, and it expects you to choose a right bound. 
When you look at your graph, one of the things you can do, especially since we've set our window to be from zero to two, or you might have to do that on this screen as well if you used a different screen, um, estimate where your um, where your graph crosses the x-axis, and you can type a number and hit enter. So I could say, well, I don't know exactly where it crosses the x-axis, but I know that it's after one. So I'm gonna type one and hit enter. And then for my right bound, I could hit two and hit enter. And then the calculator will tell me that it crosses the x-axis at t equals 1.363 or I think it's 1.362 something. Um, so that's, an, that's how you can figure that out with your grapher. This is all the work you need to write down for the college board. They expect you to use your grapher to find zeros, so it's totally okay to grab your grapher and find zeros and you don't have to tell them that you're doing that. Okay. For part C, they gave you a whole bunch of words, the total wait time for all the people in the auditorium is found by adding the time each person waits, starting at the time the pe person enters the auditorium and ending when the concert begins. The function w models the total wait time for all the people who enter the, auditor the auditorium before time t. The derivative of w is given by w prime of t is equal to 2 minus t times r of t. Find w of 2 minus w of 1. When I look at that, I think, oh, if I use w as my rate equation, then I'm going to use a definite integral to find what w of 2 minus w of 1 is. This is the total wait time for those who enter the auditorium after t equals 1. So I'm going to go from 0 to, nope, not from 0, because I'm starting at 1 for this problem. So I'm going to go from 1 to 2, and I'm going to grab my grapher, and I'm going to graph f1 of x times 2 minus x dx. Or I could have done it in the other order to match this better, but I'm just graphing w prime. f1 of x times 2 minus x dx, I do that calculation, and that just gives me 372.5. Now, it's important to think about the reasonableness of that answer. That answer is reasonable, even though it seems like a long time to wait for a concert because it's 372 hours. But that is the time that all of the people are waiting, not the time that a single person is waiting. The next question actually asks us for the time that a single person is waiting. So the next question says, on average, how long does a person wait in the auditorium for a concert to begin? Consider all people who enter the auditorium after the doors open. So this time we're not going from one to two. We want all the people and use the model for total wait time from part C. So we're going to use do the same thing we did from part C, except this time we're going to go from zero to two. And that would give us the total wait time for all the people. And it's so tempting to use the average value formula here. I don't want the average wait time for all the people over the course of the two hours. What I want is the average wait time per person. So this is the, uh, the wait time for all the people. And I'm going to take that number and divide it by 980 because that's how many people we have waiting for the concert to begin. Again, I can type that into a, my calculator on a calculator window. So I need to get myself back to a calculator window. Um, so I hit the home button and I get myself back to a calculator window. I can either go back to the one I already have or I can add a new calculator window. Actually, I don't need to hit the home button if I'm going to add a new, um, if I'm going to use the one I already had. I would do control and then this button to arrow back to the one I already have. All right, I hope that gives you an idea of how to use your Inspire to answer these questions. It is so useful to save your functions because you use them more than once for these problems. It winds up saving you time. All right, thank you so much. See you soon.